In the previous module, we have seen the Laplace transform of two different signals. And as a summary, I have shown these signals and their Laplace transforms on the screen. Let's make some observations. The signal that we have introduced first, that was, th that is there on the right, x of t equals to e power minus t u of t, was having the Laplace transform as 1 upon s plus 1, which the region of convergence has sigma greater than minus 1. And as you may see that this signal that was right hand sided, that means it is moving towards right, the region of convergence appears to be right hand sided. The right hand sided signal is having the region of convergence also as a right hand sided region. Similar kind of behavior is observed for the left hand sided signal. So you can see on the left I have drawn this x of t equals to the, the Laplace transform of x of t that is you may see that there is same 1 upon s plus 1 but with the region of convergence as sigma less than minus 1. So the signal that was left hand sided that was the signal that is moving towards left hand side towards infinite. The region of convergence also is left hand sided. So that's the observation that we can see. For right hand sided signal, the ROC is going to be right hand sided. And for the left hand sided signals, the ROC is going to be left hand sided. So let's take a signal that is bidirectional, that is both sided. Let's take an example of such signal. So consider the example shown on the screen here. The signal is x of t equals to e power minus mod of t. This mod indicates that this x of t is equals to e power minus t for t greater than 0 and it, it is equals to e power t for t less than 0. The signal appears to be something like this. As you may see that the signal is bidirectional. It is towards right and also it is, it is towards the left. So what would be the region of convergence in this case? Or what would be the Laplace transform for such signal? Let's try to find the Laplace transform of such signal. So the Laplace transform from the definition is given by x of s equals to integration minus infinite to infinite x of t e power minus st dt that is equals to I can break this integration into two parts minus infinite to zero as the signal from minus infinite to zero is e power t and from zero to infinite it is e power minus t so I can do that here e power t e power minus st dt plus the remaining integration from 0 to infinite e power minus t e power minus st dt now these two expressions are similar to what we have obtained in the previous two examples so let me complete this this is going to be equals to you may see that this expression we have already seen here and that is going to be like this. So let me write that once again. It is going to be equal to integration from minus infinite to zero e power minus s minus one t dt plus integration from 0 to infinite e power minus s plus 1 times t dt and that is going to be equals to e power minus I'll write it directly that is going to be sigma minus 1 times t e power minus j omega t divided by minus 
minus s minus 1 with this limits as minus infinite and 0 and similarly the next integral is going to be e power minus sigma plus 1 times t times e power minus g omega t by s plus 1 and negation of that now if I try to substitute these limits as you can see if I try to substitute now for 0 it's not a problem as we have seen in the previous case if we substitute this t as 0 then both of this are going to give you as 1 so let me solve that this is going to be equals to e power minus as you can substitute this 0 here what is going to be it is going to be 1 so I'll write that directly 1 times here also if we substitute this t equals to 0 it is going to be 1 and minus the lower limit here that is minus infinite it is going to be e power sigma minus 1 times infinite and e power minus e power sigma omega times infinite whole divided by minus s minus 1 similarly for the second integration it is going to be So I forgot the limits here. So it is the limits are from 0 to infinite. So if I try to substitute this infinite, the upper limit here, it is going to be e power minus sigma plus 1 times infinite times e power minus j omega times infinite and if I substitute the lower limit that is going to be if I substitute this t equals to 0 it is going to be 1 so that is going to be minus 1 and divided by minus s plus 1 now you can see that this integration this expression is going to converge only if this sigma minus 1 is a negative number not only that this also expects this sigma plus 1 to be a positive number so there are two constraints here because of these two integrations there are two constraints this sigma minus 1 this factor here so I'll write that here this factor must be negative that means less than 0 that means sigma minus 1 must be less than 0 and this factor here sigma plus 1 this factor must be positive because only in that case this integration expression the expression is going to exist otherwise this expression we, we are not going to get any expression for this so there are now two constraints so let me express this as there are two constraints the first constraint is that sigma must be less than 1 and another constraint is that sigma must be greater than minus 1 so there are two such constraints here the first constraint is with respect to the first past part of the integration and the second constraint is with respect to the second part of the integration and as you may see that these constraints are 
related to the signals that we have that we have seen before that means for the left hand sided signal and for the right hand sided signals as this signal is the composition of both that means it is a two sided signal we are going to have two such constraints here because the total integration is the summation of the individual integrations here and just because for the integration the whole integration to converge we must have this individual integrations to be converging and those individual integrals are going to converge only if this individual region of convergence conditions are satisfied and let me plot this with a graphical representation in s plane as we did for the previous example so the s plane is going to look like something like this so i'm drawing the region of convergence So the region of convergence is bounded by this sigma equals to plus and minus one. So I'll write that as this as let it be minus one and let this be plus one. As you may see here, the first condition says that sigma must be less than one. So let me draw that. The first condition says that this sigma must be less than one. So I'm drawing the shaded region as less than one. So I'll draw it like that. So complete region for which the sigma is less than one is going to be there in the region of convergence. And so on. What is the next condition? The next condition is that the sigma must be greater than minus one. So let me draw that too. So I'm drawing the area for sigma greater than minus one. So the area is going to be something like this greater than minus one and so on and of course this middle part is zero here middle point this being j omega axis and this being the sigma axis. Now, as you may see that this region of convergence is in fact overlapping. You may see that the first integration, the first condition says that the sigma must be less than one. The second says that the sigma must be greater than minus one. So what is that region that satisfies both of these conditions? So you may see that the region that satisfies both of this condition is this overlapping region. So the region of convergence, the overall region of convergence is going to be this overlapping region. So this region is going to be the region of convergence. Why? Because both of these integrations would agree only in this overlapping region. So the rest of the part is not going to be in the region of convergence. So I may now rub the other part. So I will simply rub this, the part that is not there in the region of convergence. And similarly on the right, I'm doing that just because the region for which both of these conditions satisfies is this overlapping region. So I should rub this non overlapping regions be just because they are not included in the region of convergence. So that is the 
what is called as the region of convergence for this two-sided signal. Now you may see that for the previous case, for the examples that we have seen, for right hand sided signal, the region of convergence was right hand sided. For left hand sided signal, the region of convergence was left hand sided. Whereas for this two sided signal, the region of convergence is a kind of strip. So that's what the point that we should emphasize here. The region of convergence is going to be strip. Observe that the strip or a region of overlapping. Now we miss the expression. So what is going to be the expression here? The expression is going to be as you can see that this if this condition satisfies, then expression is going to be one upon. Let me write that. So the final expression is going to be equals to so x of s is going to be minus 1 upon s minus 1 and here this would be this term is going to converge so this term is going to be 0 and this minus minus gets cancelled here so it is going to be 1 upon s plus 1 so this complete expression is going to be as you can cross multiply this is going to be or i can write it as 1 upon s plus 1 minus 1 upon s minus 1 or this s minus 1 minus s minus 1 by s plus 1 s minus 1 so this complete expression is going to be x of s so I'll write it here So this x of s is going to be minus 2 upon s square minus 1 and of course with region of convergence being the sigma less than 1 and greater than minus 1 this is a complete expression We shall see more into this in the next module. See you then.